Hola. Hola. Hello well, from Spain. Welcome to Spain. Okay, we've been in Spain for the last week. We crossed the border and immediately saw a change in scenery. Um, some wonderful uh, rocky coves and uh, fishing villages. Um, spent our first night in a place called Port de la Port Selva. De la, de la Selva. Um, beautiful beautiful fishing, fishing villages with gorgeous. village with bars around it. Yep. Really enjoyed that. Um, and it was hot. Yeah, temperature's been a lot warmer. It's um, been in the early 20s and forecast to get up around 26, which is pretty good. And I'm sure that's warmer than the Wellington autumn is at the moment. Um, so uh, we've just been exploring the Catalonia region and really getting into the history and the wildlife. Um, we went to a place called La Scala, um, some Roman and Greek um, ruins called Emporion. Um, which was just fascinating history going back to um, before Christ. So 600 BC. I didn't know any of this history about Spain, so it's been really good to learn about it. Particularly the Greeks arriving before the Romans, so it's uh, fascinating history. Also the bird life, we uh, continue our fascination with um, flamingos <laughs> and bad um, David Attenborough <laughs> impersonations. <laughs> and we also come across a stork Colony, colony uh, which is really fascinating. Um, we, the other thing we noticed uh, is the price of things. It's a lot cheaper here in Spain than it is in France or back home in New Zealand. Um, fuel, food, wine in particular. Wine you can buy in the supermarket for under two euros for a reasonable bottle of uh, wine. Um, 145 I think it was, so you're probably talking um, two dollars something New Zealand dollars. A bottle and of wine. Didn't you pick up a flagon of whiskey? And it oh, was yeah. Like, <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, my God. It's ridiculous. Yeah, um, ridiculous. Spirits are all very cheap as well. So, you could get used to this lifestyle. Yes. Um, We've noticed there have been yellow ribbons painted everywhere. Yeah. And the Catalonia region is um, very strong on its independence from Spain. So, we see yellow ribbons everywhere, and they have the independence flag flying from balconies of their apartments all the time. So, it's very strong. And they have a different language here, which. Catalonian. Yeah, Catalonia. So, you'll see things often in multi language Catalonian, Spanish. And French, but not English. <laughs> now, there's a reason yeah. well, English is pretty prevalent here yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, much more prevalent than in France. And um, we're planning our assault on Barcelona in the next couple of days. So we're staying in a place that is the um, producer of cava, which is the uh, Spanish sparkling wine. And there's also some chocolate factories around. So today we're going to be drinking sparkling wine and eating chocolate. What possibly could go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> if you've been enjoying the videos, click on the like button. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe and we'll see you next week. I'll see you next week. What a stunning spot. We're still in France, but the landscape has completely changed. We've hit a rocky coast just before the Spanish border. And every bay we go around is just spectacular like this and it's obviously a beautiful clear calm day and right down there you can see bunches of fish swimming the water is so clear Costa Brava, in a place called Roses. Well, this is actually just outside of Roses, but there's dozens of canals. What do you think, Leah? Pretty. It's pretty impressive. Everybody's got a swimming pool. And everyone's got boats. Look at all the boats and the swimming pools.
These are a different breed than we saw last time. These are not the pink flamingos. These are the Spanish cousins. Let's just zoom in a little. This is the rare black and white flamingo. We're just in the town of Perolada. This is a local castle. Unfortunately, it's been turned into a casino. But it's pretty picturesque grounds. The swan having a lazy snooze over there. We've got some storks nesting up here and up on the roof over there you can see another stork up there and there's one up there actually flying by the mating action going on up that one Bit hard to catch her but we're in Perilada and they've got a colony of storks and they stalk nest everywhere. Okay. So over here they've got end of January, February they begin arriving from Africa. March nest formation and rebuilding. April breeding is laying. April to May the ship stops. So we'll nest here at the moment. They've arrived from Africa when? They arrived from Africa end of January, February. Hola. Hola. Coming to you today from La Scala, which is on the coast, Mediterranean coast. You can see behind us. A little bit cloudy, but you can see the water. Beautiful. Um, here we've got the remains, the, the ruins of a Greek city. It was the westernmost part of the Greek Empire, and it's called Emporion, is the um, English version of it. Um, and we're surrounded by ruins here. A little bit up the way, there's also a, a Roman um, ruins a village, which we'll show later. But this Greek um, city village uh, dates back to as early as six, the 6th century BC so this is really really old um, but there's been various renovations over the years um, and the latest uh, incarnation was the 2nd century BC so still very early there's been extensive excavation of this area it used to be covered in about two meters of earth and they've um, excavated and reconstructed certain parts of it so um, around here we can see columns for one of the big buildings here and they're reconstructions obviously and down here there's um, some water cisterns which are partially reconstructed as well so this was a large building called the Stoa which is a public building um, and they would run the water off the roof into these cisterns. The Romans arrived in um, around the first century the BC, second century, second century BC. BC, and around the first century BC they built their city, which is further up the hill. It's pretty amazing. Um, what's left here? Big, another big cistern down there. They were very good at storing the water, the rainwater. There's another one down here you can see. And 
the city extends all the way down to the trees you can see in the distance there so it's quite a huge place quite a good view from up here of the extent of the ruins still in the Greek part of the city okay we're now up in the Roman city which was built in the second century before Christ BC and over here we can see some lovely mosaic floors pretty detailed this was a large mansion all right this is a bit of a close-up of the floor look at the size of those tesserae the detail of it is amazing it's beautiful over there big spiral pattern or circular pattern this was the most important room in the house where they would meet every day with their business associates over there you can see sort of more geometric pattern floor much bigger tiles rather than tesserae and if we come around here we can walk into the atrium which is a very roman thing so this was covered area and the roofs would filter would uh, direct the rainwater into this area here which would then put it down into cisterns and you could then pull up the water from those holes there so it was a rainwater collection system an atrium in the middle of the house this is more in line with what you would call today terrazzo so it's more like concrete with little tiles and laid into it it's a very early version of terrazzo This is what the villa would have actually looked like. Some more mosaic floors, pretty amazing. That's a pretty cool design one, bits of it missing. Okay, this is a Roman bathhouse. You can see there those pillars were supported the floor, and the, the tallest ones right on the left hand side there um, were where the floor was at, and they would pump hot air underneath the floor here and circulate around so it was a heated area so this is the temple which was um, in the middle of the forum the forum is around us here with columns all the way around a roof like that and if you think about the temple Marie Kare we saw in the names um, that would have had columns all the way along the front two rows of columns and um, a big square temple in the middle so let's go up and have a bit of a look apparently on the floor it's got the floor plan oh, yeah, there you go. so there's the columns where the columns would have been and there's the actual temple room in the back so it's really good having seen the Marie Kare temple to actually sort of view what it would have looked like so we're just over in the corner of the forum here I thought I'd do a 360 and try and give you a, an idea of how big this place is only 20% of the Roman city have been has been excavated so far so there's the forum there it would have been surrounded by columns we're up in a um, basilica in the corner of it at the moment you can see over here all this grassland area there's bits that have been partially um, excavated but if you look over to the far side there's a big wall there that would have been the, the southern wall of the city and it um, where it drops away there that's where it drops way down to the Greek part Emporium Emporia so yeah there's a vast amount still to be excavated I wonder what they ever will do it yeah we're just outside the wall now and you can see the wall made up of stones at the bottom and then concrete at the top so there's some good Roman concrete the holes in the bottom of the concrete were the formwork so they're obviously to 
build concrete you need to put a wooden formwork up so they did that along there and that's um, what those holes are there and I'm standing right here in the arena so they had an arena outside or an amphitheatre outside the walls here um, not a lot left of it it's an oval shape um, apparently they found a lot of nails here so they suspect it was made out of timber rather than stone and why it hasn't uh, much survived and this is their view of what it may have looked like Hola from Girona beautiful day today it's about midday we're just walking down the middle of one of the main streets in Girona just parallel to the river it's a Saturday afternoon lots of people about just working our way down trees at Girona taking in all these views pretty cool oh what's that what do you think Claire oh the houses are really nice and colourful actually really cool just looking at the Cathedral of Girona. Yes, it is. Cathedral. A few steps, we might have a we wander up there and see what we can see. Just at the Cathedral and looking back across to the Basilica over there, which is a pretty cool tower. And if we pan around here, we see this pretty impressive doorway. It's a side door. Side door, so I don't know how many archways go in there. Here we have the delicacy of Girona. Um, I've forgotten what they're called, but choo shoes, choo shoes, choo shoes, x x i o x o s or something, choo shoes, and they are basically um, hollow donuts filled with custard or cream or um, chocolate or whatever there's a few different These two types. I think they've got custard in them. Hola good morning we're at Cremolero de Montserrat so we're going to take a funicular railway up to there somewhere there's a monastery up there, beautiful sunny day We're up at the top of the mountain now. Come up on the train, you can see the railway line coming up there. Railway station just there. And this is our view. We're just standing here looking at these rocks um, and trying to see what we can see. How many faces can you see in the rocks? Amazing. Okay, thanks for that, Claire. Claire's seen things, I think. What have, what have you seen a plan? Yeah, okay, sure. You can see a face, can you? This is the courtyard in front of the basilica. Currently closed for religious ceremony, so we can't go inside until later today. Pretty stunning setting, actually.
think you actually, the rocks are more stunning than the monastery itself, is it just me or the other people think it as well? It's pretty cool faces I can see up there. You can see the little yellow cable car coming down the hill there. Looks tiny, doesn't it? Goes all the way down. There somewhere. And over here you can look at all the hillside, all terraced. At some stage they must have been cultivating something on it. Not clear what. And there's the view all the way down to Barcelona in the distance there. This is our journey down on the Rack Railway. You can see where we're going, the rails down there. Cable cars crossing there on the way up to the top. 